Well, this has turned into a bit of a weightlifting exercise. Um, first print off the uh, using the 54 inch on the 70 inch. So this thing's, uh, my guess, is about 75 80 kilos. Uh, I can just about pick it up, but won't want to maneuver it too much. Um, so I've printed the middle section and then lifted it off, flipped it back over, respread the ink, brought it back, lowered it with a two inch overhang at the far end and poured it down. So the red line is the end of the first print. So that's how it's lining up with there. That bit's took all the ink off the other straight edge, so it must be quite a high bit. Um, this section obviously then has been double inked, double printed. And then I did the same, lifted it off there. I didn't re-spread it, because plenty of ink on. Laid it down and got a similar kind of follow through. So I am looking at basically the outside edges appear to be high. So I am going to try and verify that with something else. Um, I don't know what yet. I might stick a DTR on it and stick it there and then rotate it and see what see if they are high. Um, or another straight edge. I just want to verify everything before I start hacking lumps out. Um, the condition of this straight edge when I uh, got it was uh, like everything else. It was covered in rust and grime, most of which have cleaned off. Um, you can see them where I've heavily stoned it. You can see the contact points coming through. And there's every possibility that I've stoned the middle slightly higher than the, or slightly lower than the outsides. Don't know. Um, this area here, with the staining, was quite badly corroded. Although nothing like the, uh, the last one we've done. Um, what I've what I think I've found is when it gets corroded the, the surface swells um, so you take it down to its level and then it it, it it doesn't seem to be the same uh, consistency as everything else but um, as you as you take away that staining uh, it's obviously taking the level the surface lower down so I, I'm expecting to have to re-scrape quite a bit of this to get rid of that staining and, and actually get a consistent surface um, this bit was badly done, so I'm expecting that to be something like a, um, around a thou, which is what I found when I've run a spirit level over it. I think it was a thou and a quarter this end down, and the same at that end. So I'm out of breath, and I've only lifted it up three times. That's had three roughing cycles. And we're almost getting a print. It's been very high at the edges. And that thing weighs a bloody ton. Alright, so here's the scenario. This is the uh, the six foot by four inch wide straight edge. 
Uh, on cleaning the rust off and the initial prints, it shows it's pretty level along its length. Uh, there's a slight fade off at the far, far corner uh, where the rust was deeper. But it's printing heavily down either side. I then stuck on a, uh, I think it's about 10 inch by 3 inch um, straight, straight edge across the width and verified that yeah, it's printing like that. Now obviously, well obviously, my 54 inch straight edge is 3 and a quarter inch. So I'm, for all intents and purposes, three quarters of an inch short to do a full width. I think this is just over four inch. No, this one's four inch, so the other one's just under three. Anyway, um, so when I put the straight edge on, it sits, if I put it against this edge, it sits there. And I get a high print here, and I get a bit of a print here. I then shuffle it over and print this side and for all intents and purposes I get the same. I get a print here and I get a print here and I get a bold spot down the middle. The problem is that what I'm actually doing is I'm widening out that curve whereas what I want to do is cut the tops off and then cut the tops off again and then cut the tops off again. And the problem I've got is trying to get a print that will enable me to do that or I end up having to cut this all off looking at the cross section of it cut it all off blind as in not following any ink uh, I mean I could draw fire it uh, it's a bit pikey but that would work so what I'm going to do is have a cup of tea and lunch and then come back and then I'll probably give it two or three hard scrapes inch either side just to bring it down so I'm starting to see more coverage here but I'm going to come up with something that I can print it widthways with um, and then worry about the overall length that way once I've got it flat this way what I can't afford is for it to be um, twisted as it going down its length that really will be a pain in the rear uh, not a scenario we ran into on the others um, I think when this, this straight edge was originally uh, scraped I think most, I suspect it's been done with a narrower six foot straight edge and that's what's created the problem um, it was probably fit for purpose but it, uh, I need it to be flat I think that demonstrates the uh, edges being high I've just run a, a 12 inch straight edge widthways across it it's not as bad as I thought in the middle but you can see that it's hard on on both edges So I'm going to give the edges a good scraping down um, and the trick is not drop them below so I'm teetering but it's uh, not as bad as I thought I just started to bring in the end um, areas in red are low areas in black are high and that's according to the uh, looking at the print on it so if you take this area for example you can there's my bodger you can see how the ink, the ink has been basically batted out of the way it's, it's a, a more of a blue on the lower points to the extent there there's very little ink um, to put that into context it's about a tenth <laughs> it's bloody slow just scratching away trying to get it even but uh, it's better than it started um, stopped and gone back a couple of steps to re-verify where I'm at because I was developing a hollow here and a diagonal up there so I've just done a single print now uh, so we're what, nine inches in from the end I'll turn it through so 90 degrees now if you can see we're a bit light in the middle that's the middle of the printed section heavy on the far, out, far side and then it fades out to nothing and from this end you can basically see you could see if it wasn't for the glaring lights we're hard on the far side and then for all intents and purposes we are 
very light. In the whole light area. Uh, light, in, the density increases, it goes back here. So for all intents and purposes, it ain't flat. <laughs> Which does explain why I was getting a bit of an odd print. Printing it and shuffling it left and right. So I've got to bring that one back down and then step print it across. Which is annoying, but it can't be more than a couple of tenths out now. That section. You can, uh, if you catch the light right, you can see that the the print on this edge here is dot is a darker grey. It's just because the camera doesn't pick it up brilliantly. Uh, so it's basically it's heavy here and on the far side, light there and a bit heavier there. But it's it's got the for all intents and purposes, it's twisted. That's probably the best description, which is what I didn't want. Glad we caught it now. Alrighty, well we're uh, back to step printing uh, the middle six, but the middle fifty-four inches. The black line indicates where we've got a, a nice even print with a single single print all down that section. So having got it to the stage where we're getting around 20, 25 points per inch, what I'm now doing is um, I've moved it over so I can print this last inch of width. Um, so you can see by the print, we're bare there because we're not covering it with the uh, straight edge. But then we've got a big section here, the full length, which is bare. However, we know that when the straight edge is printed in this section, we've got a perfect print, or certainly as good as it needs to be. So it's basically sitting between this point and coming to a rest there. If you look at the actual print, you can see it's, it's harder on this side than the other. And that's all the way down. So we're just going to keep removing this section down this bank until all that blue travels across and not take too much because then we'll end up with it being high in the middle <laughs> joy anyway. only problem i've had is i had one bad print um because of a slightly tough bit in the ink i don't know what happened there but it was um it went through around the roller i didn't notice it it went onto the straight edge didn't pick it up with my fingers, but when I printed it, I ended up with a three quarter inch hard lump of, of, of ink and nothing anywhere else. Uh, well, no, tell a lie, it was touching in two other places. Um, but yeah, on we go. I don't know what we were doing yesterday, but uh, we've cocked it up anyway. We took too much off this left hand side. Um, I don't understand how. I do know that there was a hollow section back here where the rust was and it seems that what I've actually done is trace is, is chase that level out virtually the full length leaving this just under half a thou below that surface so now we've got to take all the blue off again it's getting a bit frustrating well we've uh, completed the step over now so the section between that red line and you can't quite see it there that's all printing through i haven't gone for a high uh, contact section yet because uh, i've still got to bring in the ends but it's nice and even so i've got to bring in the last eight inches on each end which is a bit tedious. So uh, the procedure for that is I'm going to clean off the print, reinstate the red lines each end, uh, heel down towards the, well, about there, bring it down, move it, lift it up. Uh, and I'm expecting to see basically a rigid blue at this end and then a sort of fade out at this end. And then I'll do the same, same again from this end. Well, what's the plan? So this is the first uh, step print on each end, which uh, is interesting. So I've got a fairly even coverage, which is what I'd got when I was uh, 
prepping it up ready for step printing. Um, so that's the end of the first print, there's sort of an inch gap. And it's clear and it starts coming in here. And then the same goes to the other end, it's hard on on this point. End of the first print, that's the transition zone. And then you've got that print there. So just keep dropping the ends down. So we're just uh, working on the first end, step printing it. And if you remember, the uh, straight edge isn't wide. The, the 54 inch straight edge is not wide enough to do a whole print. So what I'm basically doing is alternating, print one side, scrape it off, print the other side, scrape it off. And what you can see the, from the patterning I'm getting, this was the end of the already scraped section. Uh, the previous scraped side was this side. So I've moved the uh, print over and done this side. So that inch strip was what wasn't removed on the earlier scrape. And that's where it's picking up. So that area, it, they're, not, they're still not in the same plane. So I'll take that down and then print it again. Got quite a way to go yet because that's where that print ends. And there's only the odd little spot. And we're what, nearly two, two and a half foot before we start getting some more print. It's a bit tedious, but it's the safest way of doing it. Well, I've spent about uh, four or five hours on this today, on and off. And uh, what I'd got was a, a, a degree of twist down it, which I just about got out now. This corner here was high, or if you like, this corner was actually low from taking out the rust what it's effectively meant is I've had to resurface not only the eight inches that was left but all the way along just to bring it out it's getting better now um, you can just about see here that it's harder on in these areas easing off there and then it comes back into a little bit hard in this area but it's a hell of a lot better than it was. Um, when you consider that I was at that kind of finish. And now I'm back to that. And I've still got to bring in this end. This end I'm pretty confident is uh, it's just a case of lowering it down now. There's no twist in it. Yeah. Um, it... Uh, could you say it's been a very very frustrating task um, the complication is not so much the length as having that extra inch and a half of, of surface that the one the master won't actually cover so them stepping it over um, you only you only need to be a fraction out in terms of the orientation of the plane so if I uh, if that's the surface we're aiming for, whoop, looking down the length of it, and these being the feet, if I print it once and scrape it, and for all intents and purposes come up with a surface which is that, when I come to do that last bit, you think, well, that's okay, it's just to take, take that off. It doesn't seem to work as smoothly as that, though. It should in theory, but it hasn't done. Um, if you then look at it in length. Like that. And you run the risk of actually, let's say, producing that as a surface. This end, before you can get it. If that's where the old, the, the previous surface you've scraped that comes. And that's still below it. You've then got to redo all of that to bring it down. I might get the paper and pencils out later and uh, do a better sketch of that because uh, that's been quite key. Anyway, that's me done for tonight. My arms ache, my back aches and I'm grubby. Just a quick mention that uh, 
one of the things I'm checking periodically is to make sure I'm not introducing twist down the length of the straight edge. Um, oh, so it's a bit of a ropey jig, but there's a parallel which I know is, is good to two tenths over its length. Um, and then my uh, Hilga Watts Spirito de Levelo. And that's measuring um, one division's half a thousand ten inches. Uh, and I'm not looking at an absolute measure just to, to make sure there's no obvious twist. So the spirit level is sat parallel there and there. And a T square to hold it square there. And I check it at the end in the middle and at the end. And I can just about discern movement, but it's uh, if it's a t if it's two tenths, I'd be surprised. So it's not a huge amount. Um, what I would make the point is, I have got the feet sat on a piece of steel sat on a wooden leg. So if I lean too much on the uh, straight edge, I can actually get that bubble to shift anyway. So it's it's by no means brilliant but it's better than no measurement at all um i've not been able to achieve a measurement on that because i can't i need to set the feet up on something i suppose i could set it up on this um it's just very fine as i go along that nothing's creeping um because every time i do a new scrape on this i'm getting a slightly different print and it is part and parcel of bit step printing it if it was on a big surface plate or I was printing it to a much larger straight edge, you'd get much better repeatability. This clip's not been rehearsed, so you'll have to forgive the uh, blethering, but um, I've just gone back through and rechecked everything to make sure nothing's shifted. So that is my 24 inch straight edge, which I print straight off the stone. And that's my, let's call it my precision one. I've got most confidence in that one. If I do three prints on that, I'm getting perfect coverage. Index it across and print it three times that way. Perfect coverage. So I'm confident that that's accurate to within a tenth over the 24 inch length, i.e. the same tolerance as my stone. And I'm confident that that, is working to the same tolerance so the most of that can be out is say three tenths end to end when i print that on the six footer um the first print which comes from around about there down the area this side of the red line and the far side of the red line is printed and then i've got a stripe up the middle which would suggest it's all twisted I've had the spirit level on it and measuring it from the far end to the middle to this end I can't determine anything more than maybe two tenths it's down to I haven't got a resolution high enough to go finer than that and that's two tenths over the full length of the um, spirit level so bearing in mind I'm only taking a quarter of that or third of it let's say it's a third of two tenths Oh, less than a tenth. So I don't think there's a huge amount of twist in it. But nevertheless, I'm getting this odd pattern. So I've then put the spirit level on again, and, and I've gone down it, stepping it down, putting its feet so they overlap. So that one then moves to that position, and we take the next measurement. On the top edge, or the far edge, let's call it, all the way along, I've got a consistent reading. On the lower edge, or the near side, I'm even, no discernible movement, all the way up until it starts to get onto this. And then I'm two tenths higher as it comes up onto the blue, and it stays at the same level all the way along here. So I'm fairly confident, <laughs> I may live to regret that comment, uh, that the, the problem is this bottom corner and not that corner so i'm going to take all this section off here that's printed take that down a couple of tenths and then reprint and then do this spirit exercise again 
hope that does it anyway. Well, it's been a couple of days on and off since I've uh, posted a, or recorded anything on this. Um, it's taken a very, very long time to take it all down gradually. Uh, I've now got to this end prints now evenly up to nine inches from the end. Uh, and yet I've still got a bit of a hole there, a slight hole there. When I look at the, the print, it's still showing a little bit high on this end. So I'm just trying to take the higher spots out of that and then just break up the print on the other. I mean, it's not an incredibly high contact count yet. I don't know what you call that. It's certainly adequate for uh, what I'm purposes I'm doing. Um, the the methodology is a bit haphazard, um, and it's a case of every, every time I run a print, if it shows up something that wasn't there previously, I wipe it off, clean the print, do it all again, um, just so I've got repeatability. Uh, to put that into context, I mean that's now at uh, roughly five foot by four inches and it takes an hour to do a cycle of uh, small curling over it. So you don't want to be doing it and then find out it's wrong because then you've got an hour to put it right and you've wasted an hour. Uh, yeah, it's uh, slow going. And we're just bringing in the uh, the end again and I've got it on the transition between the 52 inch to there and then the second print um, the hinging point is not quite where it should be uh, and yet it's it's fine up to here so I'm just using the shorter 24 inch uh, straight edge to try and pinpoint exactly where that hinge point is because it I can't do it spinning the long one so you can see so i thought it was there but it's actually here so now i've got to hoik that off and i've got to take some of them dark points down it's a heavy inking <laughs> 